Hello and welcome to GRCC's online tutor training. This module, Working with Students with Disabilities, will explore best practices on how to effectively communicate with students who may need different ways to connect with their course content. Let's start with the learning objectives and goals for this training. We will define disability, learn what both GRCC's and the tutor's obligations and roles are in supporting students with disabilities, investigate strategies for effective communication, and inform you about resources for you and the 2T. The Americans with Disabilities Act, also known as the ADA, was passed in 1990 as the first civil rights law for individuals with disabilities. In 2008, the ADA was updated and is now referred to as the ADAAA, which stands for Americans with Disabilities Act as Amended. This law requires that individuals with disabilities are provided equal access and effective communication in any programming, activities, or courses that any college offers. This law also helps colleges to define what a disability is and which individuals can receive accommodations in higher education. The legal definition of a disability is an impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities, a record of such an impairment, or being regarded as having such an impairment. As the definition indicates, if an impairment limits a major life activity, a student may be eligible for accommodations in college. Major life activities include seeing, hearing, walking, standing, learning, concentrating, thinking, communicating, reading, and breathing. As you can see, this is an extensive list. It is not exhaustive, however. There are many more we could discuss. If any major life activity is impacted, colleges must provide accommodations whenever students are prevented from accessing any programs, courses, activities, or learning. What is GRCC's legal obligation? GRCC must provide equal access to all programming, services, and education for any student who has a disability. All students must be given equal opportunities to learn. This includes not just helping students access course content, but also being able to effectively communicate this information to any student. This is usually accomplished with auxiliary aids and services. For example, the college will provide books printed in Braille and sign language interpreters for students who need these for learning purposes. Tutoring is another auxiliary service the college provides. As tutors, we have the unique opportunity to connect with students in need. But while working with a student, you might not know whether or not they have a disability. Your 2T may be unemployed, may have children at home, may be having marital problems, or they may have a disability. You won't know any of this. While students with disabilities are required to register with the Disability Support Services Office at GRCC in order to request accommodations, they are not required to disclose information to tutors. It can, therefore, be useful to learn how to recognize signs that you might be working with a student with a disability. There are a wide range of disabilities, some of which are visible to us and some are hidden. We can't assume that someone doesn't have a disability just because we can't see it. However, there are some more obvious signs that you can watch for when working with your 2T. For instance, you might notice hearing aids, white canes, mobility aids like wheelchairs, a person holding a paper close to their eyes, stuttering, or limited movement in fingers or hands. Tutors need to also be looking for less obvious signs that the student may learn differently or need different techniques for tutoring. For instance, if you are working with a student who seems easily distracted and has to take frequent breaks, this may be a student with ADD or attention deficit disorder. Or if a student asks for a material to be repeated often, they may have a hearing issue or struggle with difficult concepts because of a cognitive issue or learning disability. If a student seems sleepy, uninterested, uncomfortable, or in pain, they may have a chronic health issue or might be taking a medication that is affecting their learning. Sometimes, you might even notice a student who seems socially awkward. They might stare or not maintain eye contact at all. This might be a student with a traumatic brain injury or an autism spectrum disorder. The diagnosis is not the focus for you to know, however. Questioning the student is also inappropriate. In fact, it violates federal privacy regulations. The signs are what are important. Paying attention to the nuances allows the tutor to adapt the way they are working in order to improve effective communication. This is actually true for any student you are working with. What is the tutor's role when you notice signs a disability might exist? 
First and foremost, it is to treat everyone as equals, no matter who you are working with. It's important to regard those who have disabilities as whole people. One way to ensure this is through the use of what is known as person-first language. Carol L. Russell stated, Person first is a philosophy reflected through language and actions by putting the person first and the disability second. This helps focus on the individual rather than the disability. Some examples include a woman who has autism rather than an autistic woman, or students who have hearing impairments rather than hearing impaired students. Phrasing such as this may seem minor to some, but language is powerful. We have a responsibility to be thoughtful and mindful about the ways in which we speak to and about others. Our second responsibility is to try to make learning the most effective it can be. Interacting and communicating with your 2T might be the most effective way to identify possible tutorial techniques. Don't be afraid to ask a student how they learn best, if there is something that might be more helpful for them. For some, this might mean using diagrams, breaking up concepts into smaller chunks, or offering explanations in simpler language. Consider also the implications of the physical location. Changing the location, lighting, or noise level in the tutoring environment may increase the student's comfort level and thus improve productivity. Now that we've talked about your role as a tutor, next we will investigate additional tools and resources available to students with disabilities. Students with disabilities have resources, equipment, and technology at their disposal to help make tutoring more effective. These things include digital recorders, amplification systems for those who are hard of hearing, alternative formats of textbooks, a tactile graphic maker, and assistive technologies such as magnification software, screen reader software, spell check apps, and many more. The college can also provide handheld magnifiers and sign language interpreters. If you feel communication is an issue, talk to your supervisor to brainstorm possible solutions. There will be times that you will need tips for working with students with very specific disabilities. The next few slides will introduce hints for working with students affected by hearing and vision impairments, learning disabilities, as well as autism spectrum disorder. Hearing impairments are common. As you may know, when we age, it is not uncommon to lose some of our hearing or vision. You may not even know that you are working with a student with a hearing impairment. Here are some good practices for working with a student that you suspect may have hearing loss. Since students with hearing disabilities often rely on reading lips, talk at regular speed and don't cover your mouth with your hand or gesture too much. If your student has an interpreter, make sure that you always look directly at and speak directly to the student even though they may be looking at their interpreter. If an interpreter is not present and talking or hearing is difficult, find a quiet room with less background noise and consider using a computer or paper for communication. To help explain what a college student with a hearing disability goes through on a daily basis, we'd like you to meet Sonny. What follows is a video interview where he explains his approach to success. Well, I'm Sonny Doe from uh, Liberia, originally, but I live in Articles and uh, there where I was and I became to learn French. So I knew French for the past time and I came to the United States two years ago. So I've been a GROCC student for one year now. A hearing, hearing disability. And so um, hearing sometimes become a problem for me. So I gotta adjust my hearing ease to the various side, uh, the uh, length of the voice of the people. Okay, some people speak louder, so I have to reduce the volume. Some people speak lower, and I have to increase the volume so I can get them. And uh, in classes, I find myself to be uh, paying very keen attention to my teachers and sit in front of the classes so I can be able to hear what he say. Uh, despite the uh, sitting location, sometimes I find that a teacher goes in the back of the class to do some other discussion. Or sometimes he answers questions from other students back in the class and probably I don't get that. So I had to uh, pay more keen attention and ask a lot of questions after class to get my lessons. Yeah, because the teacher can have more patience to explain that to me so I can understand because class participation and what the teacher explains comes out in our test. So then I can understand that. And secondly, I also get tutoring assistance from the tutoring department and uh, 
that helps me to do very well in my English so I, I get E's and B's in English. For me, the best way I can learn is that I have to be first determined to study my lesson all by myself and uh, to know that if I, if I don't study, I won't understand it, that's the first thing. Secondly, when I go to class, I have to pay keen attention to my teachers and uh, things I don't understand or I don't hear well because of my hearing problems, I have to ask the teacher of the class, try to meet the teacher of the class, asking him a lot of questions to explain some things. In tutoring sections, they help me a lot. And one thing I observed that my tutors, they, uh, they understand me when I can't understand something, they try to give some illustration of what the thing is really, and uh, they try to teach it the best way they can so I can understand it. Sometimes it's like uh, showing some sign or comparing something to it so I can figure out really what it means. And they try to apply some tactics so I can basically remember some uh, important things. If you are working with a student with a vision impairment, contact your supervisor for some help identifying tools that might work for the student and the subject you are tutoring. Some best practices include reading aloud directions or information so the student knows what you are working on. Use specific words to describe what you are showing instead of using vague words like this, that, or over here. For students that have some vision, you may be able to communicate some information visually. Often, they can see black marker on white or yellow paper, or maybe they can see things on a computer that has a magnified screen. In order to promote an effective interactive learning session, spend time in your first meeting discussing what the student can and cannot see. Don't be afraid to ask what you can do to help them understand the material. For instance, it was through one such discussion that I learned GRCC's Disability Support Services office has a raised line drawing kit. This clipboard uses clear plastic paper which allows the student to feel images, graphs, or drawings. In my experience, this particular tool proved invaluable to the learning process. Learning disabilities are a hidden disability, and you likely won't know that a student has one unless they tell you. Here are some tips if you suspect or are told that a student has a learning disability. First, ask a student what helped them learn a specific subject in high school, as they are the experts on how they learn. You may have to repeat concepts in multiple ways. For instance, tell them about a concept, use a drawing to show it, and give a real-world example if possible. Another common technique is to give small bits of information at a time, then ask the student to explain it back to you to check for understanding. If the tutorial session continually feels rushed due to the extra time it takes to explain concepts to your 2T, consider asking your supervisor for a little more time with the student. As a tutor, showing empathy and understanding are sometimes more important than the topic you are working on. Having a learning disability can make a student feel isolated. Listen to Noah as he explains what college life with ADD can be like. Hi, my name is Noah and I have attention deficit disorder. It was just really hard um, trying to adjust to the surroundings around me in high school, having to go to a resource room. Not wanting people to know that I was in a resource room, so I had to try to hide that, but getting help was a lot harder than I thought it was. And um, just having ADD it wasn't fun. I mean, I couldn't figure out why I was getting such bad grades and I would study twice, twice as harder than any of my friends and I would still get S. I learned best one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. I mean, I had the group tutoring here. And it really it didn't really work for me because she would go around the table and by the time my hour was up, I maybe got 15, 20 minutes worth of help. So I like one-on-one -on -one better. Someone that can like understand my personality, obviously people who deal with ADD and know that sometimes I'm everywhere at once, you know, and someone can understand that and not get agitated with me because I'm talking so fast or I don't understand it all at once. It helped me greatly. I mean, I wanted to pass math without it. So, I mean, I would go on Tuesdays and Thursdays every week for an hour, so they helped me great. For students with an autism spectrum disorder, having a set structure in the tutoring session might be useful. For instance, get out the syllabus and assignment first, have the student write or tell you two things they want to work on, then begin tutoring. 
Students may get overwhelmed by too much stimulation or distractions in the tutoring environment, so feel free to move to a different location or have the student face a different direction if possible. Students with autism spectrum disorder often have a strong area of interest like a certain subject, video games, computers, certain TV shows or book series, etc. Try to incorporate these interests in your sessions as much as possible. For example, if you are working on the math problem, could you change the problem to one that relates to one of their favorite TV characters? By capturing their interest, you may enable them to remain focused on the topic at hand. Remember though, these students may be very strong in certain areas but still struggle with basic skills. Your 2T may learn best when explanations are to the point and simplified. This is not because students can't understand complicated subjects, but rather that extra information can be confusing to sort through quickly. In all tutoring situations, humor should be used cautiously and sparingly. This is particularly true when working with students with autism spectrum disorders as they might have difficulty understanding sarcasm. As humans, we are all unique. We all have different learning styles and needs. If a student self-identifies as having a disability, ask if they have registered with the Disability Support Services or give them information regarding the office's location and contact information. Remember though, if a student does not self-identify, do not ask them if they have a disability. If you ever have questions or difficulties which you do not know how to address, ask your supervisor for assistance. We hope this training has been useful and somewhat interesting for you. If, in the future, you have questions or would like some advice, be sure to ask your supervisor. Please turn in your responses to the corresponding assessment. Thank you for your time and attention.